so there was a, a very, very strict uh, weight reduction uh, plan on the car. Um, the old Arnage, everything's steel, and this one has uh, a lot of aluminum panels. Um, and those panels aren't easy to... Aluminum isn't an easy material to work with. It's expensive to work with. You can only do it in low volumes. And it's relatively sensitive to... Uh, there's limitations as to what shape um, you can make it. Um, so, um, the, uh, so this car uses a, pro a new process, which, is, um, which they call superforming, um, to make uh, the front wings... And, uh, and, and bonnet and, uh, and trunk, etc. And what that is, is um, sort of related to hydroforming. And what they do is they, they heat up the aluminum to uh, not a molten state, um, but a very malleable state. And then in that state, they put it over a mold and then they suck it down with air pressure, uh, high air pressure, to, uh, to achieve the form. And that's something they couldn't do if the metal wasn't heated up. So hydroforming does something similar, um, and, uh, and that's with, um, with water pressure. And, uh, and also, you know, some manufacturers use uh, extrusions, which are, again, heating up the metal to uh, a high temperature and then extruding it. So that seems to be um, the most effective and strongest uh, way to make uh, to make aluminum panels and, and aluminum shapes. It's also the way you, you get the strongest wheels, incidentally. Um, and so the car uses uh, heavy instances of that uh, in in the body structure. And uh, keep in mind, it's a very limited production car. They probably only make you know, 500 to 1,000 of these a year. Um, they spend as much time on the interior of the car as the body and the chassis. So. Uh, there was a lot of work, uh, a lot of work that went into it. Um, the, um, there were some instances where they had to put more weight back in the car because the, the designers felt that, uh, you know, the carpets, for instance, deserved, uh, deserved uh, a heavier weave and more threads per, per square inch. And, um, and so it, it, they, they addressed the luxury element of the car and they wouldn't let the weight saving compromise it. And so you've got so beautiful, um, uh, beautiful woodwork, beautiful leather, beautiful carpets. I mean, you know, millions of color combinations, etc. Um, you can see if you look at the end cap of this door um, how it's made. And this whole cap is one big piece of wood, and it's made on a table saw uh, in a shop that's filled with exotic veneers by craftsmen. Um, you don't find that in any other Bentley or, or any other car for that matter. I mean, you might have a, a wooden veneer, um, but that would usually be over a, a piece of, uh, a thin piece of aluminum and then plastic, or it could be a plastic veneer on plastic. Um, in our Continental series, it would be a veneer on a beautiful piece of cast aluminum, which is a nice piece. But this is wood. There's one, two, three, four pieces of wood plus the veneer on top of that. That, that's how you'd make a, a piece of expensive furniture. And, uh, and obviously it takes many, many more hours to do that than, uh, than a, a plastic uh, mold uh, with, with, a, <clears throat> you know, with a veneer on it. The steering wheel, they tell me, is 15 hours to make. You can make a Toyota Yaris, I think it's three or four hours. It takes much longer just to hand stitch the wheel of one of these cars than make a small... Um, uh, a Japanese or Korean car. Um, all of the um, bright work, um, it, it isn't chrome, it's polished stainless steel. One of the very few cars ever to use just stainless steel. It's much easier to use a, a, a plastic with a chrome dip, a, you know, metalized plastic, or, or if you are using metal, then use a piece of steel that's been dipped in chrome or anodized. Stainless steel is expensive to work with, um, uh, very difficult uh, to use. And the only other car I recall with all stainless trim is the Fassel Vega. And if you've ever restored one of those, you know, it costs an absolute fortune. Okay, and so then they made a big effort to um, look at the switch gear, which um, looks like glass. I, I don't think it is glass, because I don't think you need glass in a survival cell of a, 
of a, of a passenger car, um, but, it, but it looks like crystal and is beautifully um, tactile. And uh, one of the advantages that the, the car has over the, um, uh, over the previous one is that it was able to take the absolute latest in um, infotainment uh, right from the, uh, the new Audi R8. And so a beautiful screen comes out and the uh, stereo is 2200 watts. When I was, I was fitting a period stereo in, in, my, in my 80s Porsche, which was the top of the line Blaupunkt Berlin, and it has 80 watts. And that was, that was the cat's meow in the 80s, and the stereo was thousands of dollars. And this car has 2200 watts, it's amazing. Um, and the um, navigation system is intuitive, and the three-dimensional uh, screen is easy to read, and it's a uh, it's a whole um, order of uh, order of magnitude uh, better than the uh, better than the one that replaces. Um, and you can press a button, and it uh, and it uh, goes away as well. So um, uh, also in the unique to this car is what what we call a band of wood. And so that would uh, uh, encompass the dashboard and the doors. And if you look behind the car, inside, uh, there is this ring of wood as well that happens behind the passenger side. Um, inside, there's different rear configurations. And this one has uh, uh, two movable rear seats, but you can also get a third person in there if you need. This thing, this thing can um, uh, fold up like so. So you can fit um, three people in a pinch in the back, and then it's got the, uh, of course, the traditional picnic tables as well. Um, all in all, it's uh, it really is a magnificent place to be. The interior is like nothing else. Uh, even the um, even the Rolls Royces, uh, you know, they don't they don't feel as special. The the uh, Mulsanne, I would say, has an elegance that. Is, is lacked by the by the competitors. Somehow the the designer, the same designer as the Continental series, just really got got everything uh, right with this car. It has um, the the lines disguise the size of the car, and uh, it has uh, a uh, retractable uh, retractable B, as you can see. The lines of the car disguise the bulk. And uh, it has uh, an elegance to it uh, that uh, is really quite lovely. So that's the that's the history of the um, of the of the large Bentleys as best as I could do it in a few minutes. This is our our Malsan. There's no stock for these cars. Um, this was our first demo, um, and uh, they're all special order. They don't want these cars piling up, and they say that uh, China and India are basically taking you know everything that they can make. And uh, so there won't be any of these left uh, unsold. So you'll have to order the car, but that's, of course, a real pleasure. And um, I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed the video at Lawrence Romanowski, the Distinctive Collection. And uh, it's, uh, I feel very fortunate to uh, have uh, a machine that's beautiful uh, to sell. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.